Hey everybody, it's Jen. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, today I'm coming on with a video for the Doodlebug Cute and Crafty YouTube Hop that I am a part of and I'm so happy to be here and I'm really happy that you are too. Whether you've been a viewer of mine for a while or just finding me now, welcome and I'd love it if you'd subscribe if you're not a subscriber yet. Um, there's a whole bunch of talented women who are um, included in this hop that I am honored to be a part of. Christian, Rachel, Natasha, Jenny, and Natalie. So I will leave all of their channels down below. Make sure you you go see their videos too. We're all doing projects for Doodlebug Cute and Crafty collection and it's one of my favorites. So I am excited to get started and show you guys. Um, before I do, I just wanted to let you know, if you're looking for this collection, you could go to 3craftchicks.com. I'll leave the website down below. And Christian actually has a coupon code that you can use. It's Christian10. I'll also leave that down in the description box. And also, I am going to be having a giveaway to celebrate this hop. And it will be a $25 gift uh, certificate to scrapbook.com. Uh, all you have to do, please be 18 years old and over. Please be a subscriber to my channel, a visible subscriber, so I can see that uh, you're a subscriber. And I'd like you to please leave a comment on all five of the other ladies' videos as well. So um, I will pick a random comment at the end of a week next Saturday. So um, And then I'll come back and let you guys know who won the gift certificate. Just my way of thanking you for being a part of this with me and I am looking forward to starting. So whether you're here first or you've been following the hop in order or whatever, thanks for thanks for coming. So what I want to do, I had shown this project on my Instagram and on my channel um, a few weeks ago. What I had done is taken a Dollar Tree shaker frame, took it apart and then altered it to include the Doodlebug Cute and Crafty collection. And I thought I would just um, do kind of like a craft with me to show you how I did this and make another one. These frames, this one came um, this color already. Dollar Tree, different times of the, of the year, they have different kinds of shaker frames available. I've done gold ones a lot. Um, they're, they just have all sorts of different ones. But you just want to make sure that there's, you know, like a, a space below the frame to add um, shaker bits and different elements. So what we're going to do is do pretty much the same thing to this one. And this is the same exact, um, you know, configuration just with a different color and different shaker bits inside. And the good thing about these is they come with a lot of nice sequins too. So definitely save those. There's wording on the glass, so, or on, yeah, it is glass. Uh, or plastic um, that we're going to take off and we're going to leave the ribbon on so we can hang it at the end, change the background, add some ephemera, shaker bits, and it'll look really pretty. So let's get started and I'll tell you what you need. You're going to need um, a shaker frame like this, uh, scissors, hot glue works the best as an adhesive for most of this, um, a ruler, paper trimmer if you have one, I'm going to remove the wording with some pure acetone nail polish remover. You could also scrape it off with a razor blade. Um, and then some way to clean the glass afterwards, like a microfiber cloth and glass cleaner. So that should be it. So let's get started. Okay, so just turn over your frame and depending on how it's attached, you can either peel off the backing or there might be staples, you can pry those out, but this one is just peelable. So I'm just gonna do that. And this is just like a piece of craft paper that they glued on the back just to hold everything in. So we're gonna get rid of this and that came off pretty easily, which is nice. So that's in the garbage. And then it comes with these little um, you know, the photo tabs to hold the backing on. So just go ahead and pry those back like so. Okay. And then we're going to take out the cardboard that's underneath. And you're going to do this a little bit carefully just because those sequins are in there. So we don't want them flying all over the place. Take out the background paper, which is that. And there we go with the sequins. So you're just going to take those out and pour them in a bowl or whatever. I'm going to put these 
transfer them to a container later. Okay, there we go. And then what I'm gonna do, last time I did this, I took out the um, inside foam pieces, but I think I'm gonna leave them there this time. There are some sequins that are stuck, so I'm just gonna pry those out. Okay, all those sequins are out of there. So what I'm gonna do now is get the writing off of the glass. Of course, you could leave it if you liked it, but I'm going to take it off. I have never tried the acetone way, but uh, people have told me about it. So I'm go just going to use this, some nail polish remover that I have in my uh, room anyway. So that is 100% pure acetone. Let me get a paper towel to protect. Make sure you don't get on your nails if you have nails done. So let's give this a try. All right, just going to put some on a cotton ball and see how it goes. It doesn't really look like it's working. Hmm. No, that is not working at all. Maybe it works with different lettering, but not this one. Okay, so we're gonna go to plan B and get out the razor blade. So I have this razor blade in my stash. And I'm just going to go and scrape it from the sides. Yeah, see, that's working. And I'll just continue to do this. All right, I got that all scraped off. There, You didn't need to watch me do that. But So I scraped off the lettering from the inside, and then I cleaned it on either side with the microfiber cloth so it's nice and clear. Okay, so that backing piece that you took off before... We're gonna measure this because we're going to mount the background paper right on top of this. So mine happens to be, let's see, four and seven sixteenths. So I'm gonna write that down so I don't forget. And then the other side is five, and three sixteenths. Okay. And then you're also going to measure the depth of the frame because we're going to cover up these foam pieces that aren't really very attractive. We're going to put some cardstock in there. And it's kind of hard to measure it, but do the best you can. It's usually like a quarter of an inch because my ruler doesn't go right up against the... Um, the frame. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to say about a quarter of an inch. We could always trim it after. Okay, and then this one is going to be, we're going to measure how big the paper is going to be. That's about four and a quarter. And then this one is, this is the paper for the, um, you know, for, for the inside part. And that's about five, four and a quarter by five. And I'll show you what I mean once they're all cut out. All right, so first what I'm gonna do is cut the background page. And like I said, that's gonna be four and seven sixteenths by five and three sixteenths. And for my background page, I picked out one of the cute like collage patterns from Cute and Crafty. I just love this one. And this is a good background um, if you're not going to be, you know, doing too much on the front of it because you still want to be able to see some of this cute paper. All right, so the trick about cutting is leaving enough space on your table. <laughs> okay, move over, everybody. Okay, so let's okay. cut this. So there is our background paper. And that will go right on there like that. Okay, and now for the inside border pages, papers, I picked out the paint splatter page. This one I picked because it's not really directional, so I don't have to worry about, you know, how the pattern's gonna look once it's on there. So what I'm gonna do is just cut a big quarter inch strip. So I'm just gonna test this out to see if 
that's a good size. Let me show you what I'm doing. Just putting it like right on top of the foam part. Yeah, that looks good. So now I'm gonna trim those to the other measurements that I took, four and a quarter by five inch. I'll probably have to make two of these strips. Okay, we can move that out of the way now. Okay, so we have our side pieces. We have the background. All right, so to make the background, um, like what I did for here, I just built up a few layers of uh, paper and stickers. This leave a little sparkle wherever you go is a sticker from the cardstock stickers that come with the 12 by 12 paper pack. And I just put that on um, another piece of cardstock, the aqua plaid one, and then the heart one and just raised it up on some foam tape. Um, and then I added some sprinkles. These are sprinklets from Buttons Galore. And then I hot glued on some buttons in coordinating colors. So for this one, um, I went ahead and put together a piece of ephemera to use as the main part of the background. This is the piece of ephemera that I put together. This back part here, the yellow circle, is a sticker, and it said something like, uh, something about paint, and I didn't want to include that, but I really like this yellow scallop circle, so I just put a piece of ephemera on top of that. This is from the Odds and Ends from Cute and Crafty, and then I added some uh, puffy stickers, and actually three of them, and then I added some Nouveau drops in yellow on the edge of those scallops, just to echo the yellow on the background. So I think this is really cute. Um, I love that little scissor, which I used the doodle pop in this one, but this one I'm just gonna use the puffy stickers. So I think this on top of that will look super cute, right? Okay, so I think I actually am going to pop this up. I was thinking that I would just put it right onto the background page, but I think I'm gonna put some um, double-sided tape on the back. So I used these from the Dollar Tree. These work great, so I'm just going to put like three or four on the back of my embellishment. Oops, where's the front? Okay, and then you just peel the backs off. Okay, and then I'm going to put it on the center. Like so. Let's stick it on. There, doesn't that look cute? That'll look so cute in the pink frame. Let's just do it like a test run for a second. Oh yeah, that's adorable. All right, so now we're going to glue this whole thing onto the backing piece. So go ahead and get out your backing piece. It doesn't really matter which side you use. I'm just gonna use the um, messed up side to cover it up. And this one, I'm going to use my deluxe adhesive again, or my deluxe adhesive from Nouveau. I like this for paper, uh, you know, sticking cardstock to things because it doesn't warp. I'm just gonna add a bunch on here. You know, you won't see like ripples in your paper. Okay, so there we go. Right onto the backing. And this adhesive, you can just move it around for, you know, a couple seconds until it dries, which is nice. Make sure it's in the right spot. And this would be such a cute decoration or a gift for a crafty friend, right? I like that there are snacks on there. I think snacks are an important part of crafting. Okay, now we should add some buttons. And um, I just, I love to add buttons to everything. You guys know that I'm a uh, design team member for Buttons Galore and more. So I've really gotten into adding buttons to all of my projects. So like here, I glued some onto the corner. So I picked out a few that I thought maybe I could put on this project project as well. I picked out some pink ones, yellow, since there's a little bit more yellow in this one. And yeah, 
So I haven't really looked at, into this yet, but I was thinking maybe, let's say, maybe something like that. Maybe a yellow one on top of that. That would be cute. That might stick out too far, though, to tell you the truth. I think uh, just in case, I will put just one down there. Maybe the yellow one. Yeah. And then the pink one I'll put like there. Oh, and I have a heart shape one. So maybe, let's see. I'm just playing here, you guys. Oh, that looks cute. Just those two like that. Okay. And you want it to be a little, you know, symmetrical, but nothing too, like, matchy-matchy. Because I think, you know, it's, it's, hand, it's supposed to be about being handmade. You know, it should have its own character. All right. So I'm going to get out my glue gun. Move some of this stuff out of the way. This is my Surebonder glue gun, which I love. I use it all the time. Just take my buttons off and add some glue and put them right back. And I'll deal with the glue strands later, but buttons stick beautifully with this hot glue. And this is a high temp glue gun, but you can use low temp too. I'm just gonna go through and add all the buttons that we staged. Do that one? Yeah, like so. All right, so now you have your glue strings. Just peel off the ones. You could always like get your heating tool out and melt those away, but for now, I'm just gonna do it like this. Just try and find them. They drive you crazy when they stick to your hand. <laughs> All right, I think that looks really, really cute, right? Ah, love it, love it, love it. Okay, I'm gonna move my glue gun out of the way for now. Oops, sorry about that again. All right, now what I'm gonna do is glue on these pieces on the inside just to make it look super cute. So we cut them to the right length before, so go ahead and glue them in. I'm going to use, I'm not gonna use hot glue for this because this is styrofoam, so I don't want it to melt. So I'm go, gonna go ahead and use my Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive and glue all these pieces in and I'll be right back once that's all done. Okay, I've gotten all those pieces glued in. It was very easy. The quarter inch turned out to be perfect. So as you can see, it looks a lot better than those just plain white foam pieces. All right, so now we have the frame. We have the background piece. I know you wanna get some shaker bits. So as you could see in the one that I made previously, there's, you know, a good amount of space in there. So you can use some chunky shaker bits. I like to use nice buttons, uh, good size buttons so you can see them. I also use sparklets, which are uh, also from Buttons Galore. And I'll show you what those are because I made a little mix. Um, these are heart-shaped sparklets. They're like little jammies that don't have adhesive on them. And there are, you know, just like plain round ones too. I didn't put those in this mix, but this again is just like buttons, uh, pink and yellow and aqua. So you're going to pour this into your glass before, of course, before you put on the backing. So just take, you know, as much as you want. You could fill it up as far as you want. I like to just leave like a little layer at the bottom just so you could see everything else that's going on. Um, for me, that will be fine. You could do whatever you like, of course. Okay, so just lie that back down. Make sure you get this facing the right way and just put it back on the back of the frame, just where it was before and take your prongs and put that down. I like to add washi tape onto the um, sides as well if I'm doing it this way. Um, this one, I added a whole backing piece. I'm not gonna do that right now, but you could you know, put another backing piece on top of here or some washi. I'm going to, off camera, I'm gonna put some washi on there, but for now, let's just turn it over and take a look. Oh, that's fun. I like that a lot. And now you can decorate the frame. Like I did with this, I added some of the Doodle Pops. Doodle Pops? Yeah, Doodle Pops. I was thinking Doodle Bobs. No, that was an old TV show. All right, and some stickers from the cardstock stickers for there and there. 
So I got out some pieces of the ephemera because I really don't have many doodle pops left from this collection. I had the sewing machine one, but I think it's too big for this. The scale's not right. So I'm just gonna go with some ephemera and some stickers. I was thinking the yellow scallop sticker would be nice for this just because it'll you know tie into that yellow. So I'm gonna get out my scissors, take out this strip and just measure how much I want. I think I'll put it across the length. And these are pretty good stickiness. Um, I'll probably add some more glue just because, you know, it might come off. But for now, I think I'll just leave it like that because that looks really sticky, actually. I think that'll stay on. And we're going to glue some more things on top of that as well. Now, sometimes, should I do that? No, I think that's too much. I'm not going to add that one. Um, I might add, like on this one, I had added the rickrack on top. But let's test it out on this one. It might be too much, you know, but you can always test it, take it off and see. Actually, I think that looks really cute. I like the Rick Rack because it definitely like makes you think handmade, you know? All right, so I'm just gonna put that on the end and then bring it over to the other side and trim it to fit. Voila. Oh, it's adorable. I just love this. Okay, and then let's see. So I went through, like I said, and picked out a few things. I uh, These are too big. I think they're definitely too big. All right. Now, and I found the tools too. Those might be cute, like one on each side. Possibly. Maybe the pink one. That's a possibility going to move the twine ones. I also found, oh, these are adorable, the little spools. That might, maybe one tool and a spool or two. Yeah, I like that. I think that looks cute. And then we'll add some buttons. All right. So I am going to get a dab of hot glue for each of these. Should I? No, I'm going to use craft glue. I don't want the hot glue to um, warp it. So I'm going to use some of my Beacon 3-in-1, and I'm using this just because it's going to be sticking to the plastic frame. So I would use like something like this or Fabri-Tac, something that, um, you know, isn't made just for paper. All right, so I put some glue on the back of that. And I'm going to put you right there. And then the spools of thread. They're so cute. Don't you love the little happy faces on their little images? They're adorable. You either love doodle bugs, doodle bug, or you don't. But I think most people love it. So there we go. Maybe a couple of buttons. What do you think? Sounds good to me. Oh, yeah, see? See how cute that looks? Maybe a couple down here. Actually, I think a yellow one might be better. No, nope. we're going to go with that color. We'll use the hot glue. And then, should we put something up there, or is that too much? Maybe one on each corner here, too. Let's see. Maybe a pink one and a yellow one. Yeah. I just like the whimsical feel of this project. Now, does he need a button? Let's see. Mm, no, I don't think so. I think we'll leave it off of him. All right, so that is our finished project. We'll get the glue strands off. Okay, so I will put some washi tape on the back just to hold it into place, but for now, that is our finished product. 
I hope you enjoyed making this with me. If you have any questions, please let me know. Don't forget to leave a comment down below. Leave a comment on the other ladies in the hop. The next one up in our lineup is Jenny, who is Crafty Hilo Girl. She has a wonderful project for you guys as well. And um, yeah, thanks for, thanks for watching. I can't wait to hear what you think about this. And if you make one, I'd love it if you tag me, Strawberry Cream 39 on Instagram. I would um, love to see it. So thanks again. I will announce the winner of my giveaway next weekend. And I will talk to you guys later. Thanks, everybody. Bye.